Ring 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 ring. ring. Yes, hello. Is that the real estate agents authority? <laughs> uh, hello. Is that the REA? Uh, this is uh, Mr. Johnson from the um, real estate agents authority uh, complaints assessment. Committee. Yes, this is Mr. Stephen Markham's. I've been uh, chasing a certain Mr. Wing who's been completely unresponsive. We've not been able to order his accounts. Uh, would you mind just having a little bit of a look into them? I'm just a little concerned. We've not received any uh, details on their trust accounting. Uh, we certainly will. We'll look into that for you. Thank and, you. Uh, we'll come back to you. Thank you. Thank you. Right, ring, ring. Ring, ring. Ring, ring. Click. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's Mr. Zim. That's the machine. <laughs> yeah, uh, Mr. Zim. Uh, this is um, Mr. Johnson from the uh, Complaints Committee of the Real Estate Agents Authority. Uh, I'd like to schedule a meeting with you to um, investigate uh, what's happening with uh, your trust account. We've had um, information from your auditor that he's not received multiple um, audit reports. Uh, so are we able to schedule a meeting with you, sir? Now <laughs> 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 that, that is exactly what happens. <laughs> Actually, uh, we're on our NZRET now. We don't actually, we don't actually uh, get our orders done through them anymore. So. Okay, so uh, Mr. Zen, are you aware that um, under the Real Estate Agents Acts and Audit Regulations that you're required to advise the REA of any changes to your audit and or trust account details? Uh, um, yeah, no. Um, I'll get my uh, accountant to send that. that Okay, well, thank, thank you, Mr. Zen. Um, we'll be investigating this a little bit further. I mean, off goes an email, yeah. or multiple emails. <laughs> next and, next uh, case, the vendors list their Taupo property with a trustworthy real estate agent, Mr. Zen, <laughs> on the 24th of June 2013. <laughs> <laughs> Just one day later, a sale of purchase agreement is signed. The Royal Gardens Family Trust and or nominee are the buyers. That's good business. Yeah. Fast turnaround. Is Mr. Z doing <laughs> 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 Yeah, so um, yeah, we're investigating this case. Yeah, so we'll get a report back to you. Got a little concern regarding a sale as we've recently recorded uh, changing hands in Taupo. Um, and wonder if you wouldn't mind just having a look. We were just concerned uh, that the proper process wasn't followed here. Would you just check it out? It's a, uh, the key uh, director, <coughs> Mr. Zing. Okay, thank you, Mr. OIA. OIA. Uh, we'll investigate this further for you. Thing. Ring, ring. Ring, ring. Oh, this is a meeting. <laughs> yeah, we need to make a meeting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hello. But uh, we had quite a lot of trouble getting hold of Mr. Mr. Zing. We emailed him. We rang him. Eventually, we were able to actually uh, schedule a meeting in his office. Um, so, bing. So, Mr. Zing, Mr. Johnson from the. Uh, How's it? Right. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Um, we just had information that you may have been involved in a purchase of the property at Kawakawa Road in Taupo. Yeah, yeah sounds familiar. Sounds familiar. Yeah. And um, you know, being a, real, a licensed real estate agent, you have obligations under the Real Estate Agent Act um, to produce certain documents. Uh, do you have those documents? Uh, which documents? <laughs> documents. Uh, the de declarations uh, and also valuations. Uh, oh, no, no, no. Uh, they, they, we've made an agreement. We don't have to. We don't have to do that. So, but the property was listed with your company, Mr. Zing. Yeah, yeah. One yeah. of my one of my associates uh, listed that property. But you are aware that it's listed by your company, so you're still under the obligation of the act to satisfy. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yep. So, so do you have those documents? <laughs> No. no. <laughs> Are you able to obtain those documents for us? Yeah, yeah, I'll send them through to you. Okay, and, uh, <laughs> and uh, so will, will we get those within a week? 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we look forward to uh, receiving those documents. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> At that point, there was no more contact from Mr. Zen to the. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> CRC then upgraded and took it to the disciplinary tribunal, which there were further investigations. Um, and you can take over from there, Cathy. So, 15th August 2018, Mr. Johnson visits the agency office again. Mr. Jing is unavailable. A message was conveyed for Mr. Jing to contact Mr. Johnson, but of course he never responded. <laughs> <laughs> Fourteenth of March, two thousand and nineteen, Mr. Johnson emails Mr. Zing. Mr. Zing is required to provide written response with the following: provide all agency sales from April, two thousand and thirteen, and evidence regarding deposits; all audit reports for year end March, two thousand and sixteen and seventeen; Telco property details, so he needs a listing agreement, sale and purchase agreement, and valuation and evidence of disclosure. April 2019, Mr. Zheng replies, read the audits, we use NZRET since April 2015, read the Telco property, Mr. Wang listed it, um, LJNZ purchased it and he included copies of the letter dated 17th of July 2013 and 12th of August 2013 from Mr. Wang to both solicitors recording deposit paid into the agency's trust account and the sale and purchase agreement and evaluation. That was it. And the agency's trust account theoretically was closed at that point. And Mr. Zheng was still just happy. Actual <laughs> 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 I'm sorry. <laughs> 23rd of November 2019, a notice was sent to the agency and to Mr. Zheng. You'll have until the 4th of December to provide the following documentation for where all deposits have been paid since March 2015 and that trust account has been audited, audit documents again, records showing all deposits paid to the NZRET since March 2013 and a full property file for the Telpo property. <laughs> <laughs> Extensions were sought but even after the extensions, no response. 30th of January 2020, after a reminder, Mr. Zheng eventually replies, see attached documents. Again, he just attached the letters to the solicitors about the deposit being paid and a copy of the sale and purchase agreement. No order. 30th of September 2020, charges were served and he had 10 working days to respond. But he was busy. <laughs> yeah. um, many attempts are made to contact Mr. Zheng over the 2020 year. There was no response. End of 2020, application was served on Mr. Zheng. He replies the same day, stuck overseas, not back till February 2021. <laughs> <laughs> there was a hearing on the 3rd of May 2021 and these charges were filed. Charge 1 was the agency was found guilty of misconduct under section 73C-5 of the Act in relation to its failure to comply with the section 85 notice. Charge 2, the agency was found guilty of misconduct under 72B, failure to comply with sections 134 to 137 of the Act, read the Telco property transaction. Charge three, Mr. Zheng was found guilty of misconduct under section 73CI of the Act in relation to his failure to comply with section 134 to 137 of the Act for the Telco property transaction. And charge four, Mr. Zheng is found guilty of misconduct under section 73C1 of the Act in relation to failure to comply with the section 85 notes. So guilty on all counts, poor Mr. Zeng. <laughs> you want to do the penalty? Yep. 
So the penalties um, for what we consider fairly serious um, charges and fairly serious actions. Uh, the agency um, and the licensee, they were censured and uh, the licenses were suspended for 18 months and a fine of $5,000. Um, Mr. Zen was also censured and his license suspended for 18 months and also a fine of $5,000. Uh, there was total investigation or um, the tribunal had cost of around 20,000. Um, Mr. Zen and the agency were ordered to pay $10,214 of that contribu contributing to the um, committee's costs. And uh, <laughs> considering we, we, we looked at this and uh, there, was, there, was, <laughs> there was actually a, a major threat to public money or um, you know, the, the purchase of money because he was not obviously using the trust account. Um, the uh, NZET, they didn't have any record of any money ever going into the trust account on his behalf. Um, he obviously purchased property, didn't get the, the, um, the, you know, the required valuation and forms and consent forms filled out. So he just basically was to just totally disregarded the rules of uh, what we should be operating under. Um, also aside from those that weren't in, in, in the findings, um, he also, um, they, they did a voluntary audit on his listings. He had 22 listings, I think, at the time, and only um, 12 of those were actually had signed listing authorities. So again, he was, he was in, quite in breach of um, yeah, the code of conduct. Um, he was also displaying around 12 salespeople on the wall, of which there was only two registered with the NZ, um, or with, with the REA. Um, so yeah, obviously just not operating as they should be in, in the real estate industry. Uh, and we look at those fines and uh, you know, centre and you know, what do you have to do to lose your license? You know, we don't yeah. really want these sort of people in the industry. And I think you know, whenever you know, we have, you know, occasionally we get a correspondence from the RA, we treat it with the, uh, the utmost urgency. Um, we want to get it sorted out, but obviously Mr. Zen didn't um, have those uh, <laughs> Those rules, and uh, he has suspended his license until um, 2024. But there's nothing to stop him re-entering the industry. And 